Let's talk about side lobes. Side lobes describe sound energy reflections that are generated at improper off-axis locations alongside the main beam. They're added to or assigned as part of the main beam and occur in both single and array transducers. Some authors quote that side lobes can only be seen in single plate transducers, but it's well documented that you can see them also in array transducers. Side lobes appear as hyperechoic or hypoechoic densities within a hypoechoic anechoic background, such like a bladder. This is a schematic of the main lobe coming out of the transducer and the side lobes, one on each side. The side lobe contributions to the main beam will create artifacts in the proper setting, such as the next slide, which shows a two view of the bladder. You can see that on the right hand side within the uh, the, the anechoic portion of the bladder, that there is a hyperechoic density, which is an artifact known as a side lobe artifact. This is quite commonly seen in the clinical setting. So what are the potential solutions to getting rid of side lobes? Well, from a transducer design perspective, you can do apodization, which we'll discuss in the transducers lecture, which involves uh, making the, um, the gain uh, in the center of the transducer uh, be higher than the edge. You can do differential amplification or you can do preferential receiver amplification of both the central and lateral elements. Next, we'll move on to a similar entity. Uh, this time it's grating lobes. Grating lobes for sure are related to finite transducer array elements and you can see that they're worse for phase arrays. Grating lobes produce bursts of energy at oblique angle from the main beam they cause reflections to appear at improper off-axis locations in the image, similar to side lobes, and they occur frequently with strong reflectors near the hypoechoic and anechoic structure, again as in the bladder. In the next four slides, we will discuss how grating lobes are generated. This next diagram shows a um, transducer array, a curvilinear probe, that has the main lobe signal coming out and grating lobes at a very um, uh, acute oblique angle uh, on either side of the main beam. The real object is depicted in blue in a circle and as the beam is scanned from the left to right across the transducer, the grating lobe will basically hit the real object and the signal will go back to the main beam such that the transducer thinks that the real object is located far away, lateral to the actual object of interest. And therefore, this is an artifact located lateral of the real object and has an effect of grading lobes. Recall in our previous discussion of slice thickness artifact under the resolution section of this lecture that grading lobes uh, was an alternative explanation for this hypoequipped fluid within the bladder. In this case, we know that you need a hyperechoic structure as an uh, initiating factor to facilitate the grating lobes. So here, grating lobe artifacts are shown as a hyperechoic fluid within the bladder, which in real life is not real. Now on the other hand, you have this other example. We have a patient with full bladder who just had a Foley catheter inserted, as seen by this circle circular structure with the hyperechoic ring and surrounding it is a hyper hypoechoic fluid that is uh, not real because bladder with uh, urine is typically anechoic and is dark so the arrows point to the hyperechoic fascia plane surrounding the bladder and then the um, other arrow points to the grating lobe artifacts in the form of the hypoechoic signal what are potential solutions for eliminating grating lobes First, you can redesign the transducer array mm -hmm. such that the individual elements are less than one half wavelength apart from each other. You can also vary the angle of insulation, or you can use different scanning windows uh, or approach to uh, eliminate the presence of this artifact. We're now going to talk about the third category artifacts from this lecture, namely attenuation artifacts. There are many sub subcategories uh, of attenuation artifacts. The first one I want to talk about is acoustic shadowing. Acoustic shadowing is an important type of artifact that describes a reduction in the echo strength 
of signals arising from behind a strong reflector or attenuating structure. Examples include gallstones, renal calculi, bone, and even gas. In the next several slides, we're going to go through three broad categories of different types of acoustic shadowing, ranging from the strong to the weak. The first example is imagine a large strong reflector, as depicted with the blue circle. Examples include ribs and bone. When you have an incident ultrasound beam that uh, is incident upon this object, it will cast a very strong and discrete anechoic shadow distal to this object. The uh, signal intensity is uh, very close to zero because all the echoes return to the transducers. Now, the second category uh, describes a small strong reflector. So when an instant beam uh, hits this structure, uh, not all the signals are reflected, but yet there's enough signals of reflected such that you only have uh, only a hypochoic intensity of uh, shadowing distal to the structure. This to Calfer's category including gallstones. Finally, you have a small weak reflector in which uh, after the incident beam uh, hits the object, you cast a dirty shadow uh, behind or distal to the object. This uh, covers examples such as gas. Now in the next uh, clinical example, you will see um, the uh, first category of the large strong reflectors. Uh, in this case, rib shadows. In the right up quadrant scan, you see uh, the yellow arrows point to the two rib shadows. And then you also have the vertebral bodies casting a strong uh, reflection to the incoming ultrasound beam, casting multiple vertical rib shadows. Next, we're going to talk about comet tails, which describe the second category of small strong reflectors, similar uh, process uh, to reverberation. Because of the acoustic mismatch between incident beam um, and the, um, the different acoustic impedance, there is minimal echo transmission beyond the object of interest. This is composed uh, as a result of thin, closely spaced discrete echoes forming clean shadows. In lungs, if you get these comet tails, they're called beelines if the signals go all the way down to the uh, the far field of the uh, the B mode uh, two-dimensional image plane. Next, we're going to show an example of a comet tail in the form of gallstone. You see that the, uh, uh, the ultrasound signal uh, distal to the gallstone, which is situated within the gallbladder, uh, casts a, um, a discrete column of uh, hypochoic uh, intensity in the form of a shadow that forms this comet tail artifact. It's labeled acoustic shadowing. This is a, uh, a clue for, uh, uh, for you when you scan somebody who might be obese if you can catch a glimpse of this comet tail shadowing or artifact, then you can be sure that you might be looking at a stone. Now, as we talked about a little bit a uh, while ago, if the comet tails, uh, when you see them in uh, in lung parenchyma, uh, you rename them beelines. Here you see that the um, acoustic mismatch caused by the, the air pleural interface cast these uh, comet tails or beelines that reach all the way from near field to far field. Now the third category of these small weak reflectors uh, will come give you this ring down artifact. In contrast to comet tails, ring downs uh, yield a little more echo transmission than comet tails. It is caused by resonance phenomenon associated with gas bubbles. So as you would expect, you'll see this phenomenon uh, in biogas. Uh, they also appear similar to reverberation, producing numerous parallel echoes. And in the um, ultrasound clinical parlance, we call the uh, acoustic shadowing from ring down effects dirty shadows because the, um, this, the column uh, distal to the object of interest uh, is not very clean, it's not very discreet, and this uh, mixed uh, heterogeneity uh, in terms of signal gives the uh, effect of dirty shadowing. Here's an example of ring down. In a uh, person, uh, unfortunately, who has a uh, necrotizing fasciitis in the scrotum, here you see that this uh, resonant effect of the uh, uh, of the gangrenous gas uh, cause this uh, ring down artifacts, these dirty shadowing distal uh, to the air bubbles. 
And as you can see from the red arrows, uh, they're pointing out this dirty shadowing, which uh, emanate, in this case, from the near field to the far field. Unlike comatails, or in the case of the lungs, bee lines, these shadows are not very clean and not very discreet. And because they're dirty shadows, they're caused by gas, we call them ring down artifacts.